bad. So let me share. let me share my screen right quick. I hope you can see my screen. And I'm gonna share our message for today. It's called Grace for Finances. Grace for Finances. And today's message is a message that I believe that God wants us to to discuss and talk about because um, there's nothing you in most cases in life <laughs> most of anything we need is attached to finances if you are thinking about getting married trust me <laughs> there's money involved think about having children i mean come on come on i had in a lifetime you spend about five hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars raising one child, something like that. I know it's a, it's a big range. So some people decide not to have children because they feel like the expense is much, but I mean, everybody has that different mindset, but you get the point that there's nothing you want to do in most cases that don't involve money. If you want to travel, you need money. If you want to take a day off or two days off or take a week off or take a month off, what do you need? You need money. I'm not talking about money overall as the whole, the whole thing. We're just gonna look at everything in essence, but what I'm trying to say is that the Bible says that the rich rule over the poor is, is, is normal. And the borrower is a servant to the lender. That's the word of God. And God also said in Haggai 2, 8, he says, the silver and the gold is mine, say the Lord. So um, this is a very powerful message that I don't want you to miss. Because me, myself, I want to be blessed. I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm also listening to it. And God himself will bless us in Jesus' name. The Bible says what? The rich rule over the poor. And... I believe and I know that God wants you to make you the top one percent in every part of the world. I was watching um, a man of God called Bishop Edeku, and he said that in any country in the world is in the top one percent. That means that if you throw him in New York, if you throw him in London, it's going to be in the best part of town. It's going to have the best things. And if you see the Bible, like when the children of Israel came with Jacob or with Israel to Egypt, they were put in Goshen, and Goshen was the best part of Egypt. I know Egypt was the number one world power. So God is saying to you and me that the grace for finances is there for you and me for the taking. And I pray that as we go into the word of God today, and as we dissect the word of God, as we discuss that God himself will amplify that message to you and me in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace for finances. Let's look at the first passage that is, uh, I want to show you is the book of um, Second Kings 5, 20 27, and I put Prophet Z, you know him, Prophet Z, Prophet Z, Z. But Gehazi, the prophet, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, look, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian. Why not, why not receiving from his hands what he brought? But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. Hmm. Verse 21, so Gehazi pursued Naaman when Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, is all well? And verse 22 says, and he said, all is well. My master has sent me saying, indeed, just now, <laughs> two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two change of garments. Because that way, when somebody wants to lie, they can formulate anything in their head. <laughs> 23. So Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants. And they carried them on ahead of him. Verse 24. When he came to the citadel, he took them from his, their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go and they departed. Verse 25. Now he went in and stood before his master Elisha and said to him, where did you go, Gehazi, prophet Z? And he said, your servant did not go anywhere. <laughs> Two lies now. Verse 26. Then he said to him, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing? olive groves and vines and sheep and oxen, male and female servants. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous, as white as snow. Hmm. 
Anybody have any comment on this passage? This passage is very popular. I know you might be wondering that how does this have to relate with finances, but anybody have any um any comments on what they got from this this passage so far or this um, scripture? Hey, Mr. Toby, you go ahead. Thank you, Lord. I just this is my first time I'm realizing that he said as the Lord leads. <laughs> It's quite hilarious to think about it that he literally said it as God leads that he's going to run after um, Naaman. That shows his desperation. That that I mean, you know, desperation to do something that is not even right. But yeah, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shows desperation. Anybody else have anything to say about this um, scripture? You can put it in the chat as well if you want to speak. Anybody have anything to say? Anybody else? It's very, I mean, it's a very popular passage in the Old Testament, but it's 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 very powerful. Okay, um, as I go ahead, if you have anything to say, just let me know. First of all, from this passage, you can see here, if you look at the previous verses, there's a man named Naaman. Naaman was one of the strong warriors from Syria. And through him, God actually wrought great miracles in terms of like, he was very brilliant, very powerful man. The man went to war and won. But there was one but in his life. There was one thing that made him sad. He was leprous. But, you know, when um, a strong man goes to war, he wears all his armor, so they may not see the leprosy, but inside he was suffering. And his, let's say, house girl or servant tells him about a prophet in Israel, like, hey, there's a prophet in Israel that can heal you. He goes to Israel and he gets healed by Elijah. And then he told Elisha, he said, do you want anything? Elisha said, no, I don't want any of your thing. I don't want nothing. Now, for Elisha to say, no, I don't want anything, that means Elisha had his own thing. You know that. For Elisha to say, no, hey, keep it. It's okay. Yeah. And I know for a fact that he did not want to take it because Naaman also worshipped other gods and he served other gods. And you can see here that Elisha would not take anything that's offered to other gods. Same that Abraham, when he came from war, and I think one of the, the prince of Salem or something like prince of where the prince of the other came and asked him, he said, no, 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 no. I, I'm not messing with you. Elijah said, no, I'm not touching this thing. Go ahead, go back. The Lord has healed you. To God be the glory. But Gehazi, what did he do? He ran, as uh, Mr. Toby said. He said, by God, he ran after Naaman and took his goods. From here, you can see that when God created us, he created us to want good things, but under the right place and right circumstance. When God created us, he created us to want more. And I will show it in a subsequent slide. But there's a place where you need to see and know what God wants for you in that moment. I will expand more as we go ahead, as we go along. He goes and he lies. The thing about God is that when God blesses you, you don't have to go against the mode in terms of lie, steal, kill, because the devil is one that lies, steals, and kills. See, in the war system that we have today, there's a lot of pressure. In the capitalist society that we have today, it is dog eat dog war. You know, you know what I'm saying? Desperation. Everybody wants to get to the top, and they're using different methods. Some who sleep their way to the top, some who connive their way to the top, some who, whatever it is. But God is saying to me and you that Proverbs 10 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich with no painful toiling. That's what God says. So God will help us in Jesus' name. So when he gets there and he gets the stuff that he was supposed to get, he gets back to his master. And I have a feeling that Gazi has done this before. You know, for you to lie to your master, you have done it before. For you to go after the people that have come for healing, that means Gazi has done it before. He has gone after other people before. But this was his destroyer, or the straw that broke the camel's back. He goes, he comes before a prophet of God. And the man asks, where have you been? He said, I've not gone anywhere. Uh-uh. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Okay. The sickness that was hanging, that was hanging somewhere, that's what he called in verse 1. He said, let the leprosy of Naaman. That means that leprosy was bad. It was very severe. It was intense. Because it led to as white as snow. Let it follow you. And he now said, on his descendants. The thing about 
<laughs> grace, the thing about financial prosperity, anything you do, it has an overflow. Anything you do, do you know if you do something in the negative, it not only affects you, it can affect your family members. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. What am I trying to say in this passage here? That when God blesses you, you don't have to lie. When God blesses you, you don't have to steal. When God blesses you, you don't have to do anything against the word of God. May God help us. Let's continue. Anybody have anything to add before we continue? Let's get to this finance thing. Anybody? And I see something in verse 26. He said, is it time for you to get money, receive clothing, olive groves, vineyard, sheep and oxen? I have a feeling that this man has done it before. Because he mentioned some things that the evil name did not give him. He said, is it time to receive male and female servants? Is it time for it? He said, let the leprosy of this man cling on you. And that was it. And you know what even surprised me is that he didn't even say, I'm sorry, sir. Please forgive me. I am so sorry. I have missed it. He was a very skillful liar. He was very hard-hearted. Some people say, ah, I'm sorry. Please, please remove this cause. He, didn't, he just left. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's go into our stuff for today. I put here, and I want to let you know that God has ordained you and me for the topmost top. God has ordained you and me to be the, at the top. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 20, they say you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. If you look at the book of Genesis 1, 28, it says, then God blessed them. And you know, it's me and you too. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. God wants the best for you. When God created you and me, he created you with the best intentions. God is not wicked. God is not a bad God. God is not someone that will punish you for something. You know, God, I mean, the Bible says, have you seen a man that lost his child that will give his child um, um, stone if he asks for bread or give his child something? You know, that, that verse. God even loves you more than your parents. God wants the best for you. Proverbs 4, 18. It says, but the path of the the part of the judge is like a shining light that shines even brighter onto the perfect day. God created you and me to want more. God has great plans for you. He said, I know the thoughts or the plans I have towards you, thought of good or evil. Some say to give you a future and a hope. Some say to give an expected end. God has big things ahead of you. He said, I has not seen, nor ear heard what God has in store for you and me. Ephesians 3.20, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. So God has great things planned for you. And I pray that the things that God has planned for you will come to pass in Jesus' name. Every promise that God has made over your life will come to fruition in the name of Jesus. Say loud, amen. Those things that God has earmarked for you must come to pass. We will have testimonies to share about it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move on. Let's move on. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And God will generously provide all you need. And you know Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God has made you to live in the realm of the overflow. I'm just giving the things that God has for you. These are your benefits. Same thing in Deuteronomy 28. You will live in overflow, overflow, overflow. God, the Bible says you will eat and you will be full. So God is saying here in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, he says, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need, everything you need, everything, life, money, happiness, the goodness of God. You will have, and you have plenty lot of us to share with others. When God wants to give you the grace for abundance, he does not give it for you alone. He knows that if he gives it to you, you will bless humanity. You will bless the world. So God is saying to you and me that the grace he has for you is not for you alone. It's not for your, me, my wife, and my children, me and my husband. No, it's for everybody around you because you have plenty left over to share with others. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. See, the place where God is taking us to, even the richest men in the world will not be able to compete with us. Say amen. Have faith for that. The place God is taking me and you to, I, I mean, 
the richest people in the world will not be able to compete. So let's look at the Isaiah 61. It does hit me now. Isaiah 61. Let's put Isaiah. If you have your Bible, put to it. Isaiah 61. Quickly, please. Isaiah 61. Uh, Isaiah 61. Let me just get it. Mm. There's a place where he says that, that foreigners shall be your servants. Uh, verse 5. Isaiah, and say, and strangers. Isaiah 61 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And God is saying to you and me that you are going to be an employer of labor. We are going to bless humanity. May God help us in Jesus. There's one more I'm looking at, I'm looking for. But I just want to let you know that God has great things planned for you. God has excellent things planned for you. And may you enter into your rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't worry, we are going to get to the meat of it. Just go with me. Why do you need grace for finances? Why? We live in a world that is driven by finances. Okay, I want to ask you a question now. You're asking God to bless you. You are trying to get a, a, let's say, a doctorate degree at Harvard. Is it going to be free? <laughs> I'm not giving an example. You want to, your car is very bad. I want to buy a new car. It says God tries somebody to bless you with a new car. You need money to buy a new car. We live in a world that is driven by finances. We live in a world, if you are flying, let's say you are flying from Atlanta to London, there are different ways of flying to, to London. You can go through economy class, you can go through coach, you can go through business class, you can go through first class, you can go through private jet. We live in a world driven by, I, I, tried, I was traveling somewhere one time and we passed by their first class, class cabin. Oh, 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 there are different airlines. I won't tell you about the airline, but when I use that airline, I'm like, oh boy, there's good <laughs> money is good. We live in a world that is driven by finances. That's the world we live in. Okay. Okay, this cloth I'm wearing. I, I, I went and I bought it with money. You will live in a world driven by finances. Number two, God wants you to be prosperous. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And that's what I wanted to emphasize from the passage we read in the beginning, is the fact that when God wants to prosper you, God will first prosper your soul. That means that God will not prosper you and you'll be derelict in the place of your devotion to God. You'll be derelict in the place of your, your commitment to God. God prospers in every realm and possibility. He prospers you in your health, in your finances, in every area of life. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Why do you need to, when you need grace for finances, you need effortless money. You need effortless money. I was in a man of God preach one time. He is from Ohio. And he said that he needed money for his organization. And he was getting G3. And he was like, God, what do I do? What do I do? And I know many of us, sometimes we are under financial pressure. You have to pay bills. You are owing somebody. I pray that God will give you effortless money in Jesus' name. What is effortless money? It's money that you do not work for, that just comes to you by the grace of God. May God give you effortless money in Jesus' name. Say amen. This man was very scared. And do you know what happened? <laughs> he said somebody, maybe he got a check or something, and that wiped out any concern he had for $500,000. Ladies and gentlemen, God can bless you beyond $500,000. When you have grace for finances, you have effortless money. Why do you need grace for finances? The rich rules over the poor. Look at Proverbs 22, 7. The rich always rule over the poor. I was in London one time. I was in London and they were, they, they were telling me, you know, if you go to, if you have been in London, if you go to South London, South London is like a lot of Niger people, <laughs> a lot of immigrants. Same with South Atlanta, anywhere you go, South, South. East London is okay, but they say North London, that's where the football players live. All the other soccer players, they say they live in North London. If you want to live in North London, what do you need, please? You need the money. The rich always rule over the poor. You see that some people, they'll go to you for healthcare and they will treat them badly because they don't have money. Where I come from, 
Do you know for them to even take care of your child in some places, if you don't have the money for good health care, there's a problem. The rich always rule over the poor. So God is saying that we are rich, we are wealthy because he is wealthy. May God help us in Jesus' name. And he says the borrower is always servant to the lender, Proverbs 22, 7. So you need grace for finances because we live in a world driven by finances. When your bill is up, your finance bill, or your, let's say you have to pay your phone bill, you don't tell your, 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 your phone company that, oh, I'm a child of God, I believe in God, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. If you don't pay, they will cut your phone. We live in a world driven by finances. You are driving to work, you need money to buy gas into your car. We live in a world driven by finances. We live in a world driven by finances. But God is saying that you are above the world because he that believes in Christ is above the world. Let's continue. Go we help us in Jesus' name. So I was going to ask you a question. <laughs> and please answer me. Please, somebody just post in the chat. What statement is not true in the a, B, and C, please. You can post in the chat to answer anyone. Which one is not true? I'm waiting though. Okay. Anybody else? My wife said A, F, C. Miracle B. Anybody else? Don't forget to invite somebody. Invite, 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 invite. Toby, Mr. Toby A. Anybody else? Anybody else? Cecilia, none. Thank you. Cecilia, Timmy. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? We have 10 more seconds. Fee, all. Ah, Fee, you have changed your mind. Abide me. Okay, okay, okay. Fee, you have changed your mind, though. <laughs> oh, all of the above. Oh, thank you very much. That's true. That is true. That is true. The answer is all of the above. If you answered all of the above, you are correct. Money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. The love of money. Money takes on the personality of the owner. Money takes on the personality of the owner. If I carry 50 pounds and I show it to you, 50 pounds with me, it will be given to the gospel. It will be used for great things. 50 pounds with a drug dealer will be used for drugs. 50 pounds with an alcoholic will be used for what? Alcohol. 50 pounds with someone that sleeps around will be used for for that money takes on the personality of the owner money is not the root of it is the love of money and the bible says you can't serve two masters and god does not want you to be poor and jesus was not poor if jesus was poor he won't have a treasurer may god help us in jesus name jesus wasn't poor people always say jesus was poor the idea of maybe someone say <laughs> let's not go into it jesus was not poor let's continue so what is grace for finances? Grace for finances is getting your wants and your needs met. Grace for finances is getting your wants and your needs met. It is the absence of financial pressure. And financial pressure comes to everybody. But God is saying to you and me that when the grace for finances come, it is the absence of financial pressure. It is the absence of but God is able to make all grace. You see that for second grace that is abound towards you and me. So you have sufficient in all things to abound and to give to other people. Grace for finances is the absence of financial pressure. There are many people under financial pressure that they even put their pressure on other people. Let me tell you something. Everybody has their own thing they're dealing with. <laughs> Nobody loves you more than they love themselves. But God is saying that grace is the absence of that thing. I want to emphasize the financial pressure. For those that are going through financial pressure, may God remove it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace for finances is giving to advance the gospel, building churches, giving to the needy, to the poor, and blessing humanity. That's grace for finances. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 16, it says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. You know, I want to emphasize on financial pressure. There are many things that can put pressure on you. And I want to let you know that there's a place where God gives you grace to plan. If you know that you have a bill due at the end of the month, let's say you have a $1,000 bill due, maybe your rent is due. Grace will tell you that by the first of the month, once you start planning, start putting something together 
So by the end of the month, you have money to pay that bill. So God is saying to you and me that grace for financial pressure is also wisdom to adjudicate your money in such a way that you have money for everything that you need. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And grace for financial for finances is also getting your wants and needs met in such a way that it is transgenerational. Proverbs 13.22. Let's look at Proverbs 13.22. Proverbs 13.22. Please, let's look at this very quick. Proverbs 13.22. Proverbs 13.22. Please, I'll open to it if you are there. Proverbs 13.22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for, his, for the just. The first thing a man, a good man leaves for his children is salvation. You leave a legacy of God. A legacy of God. Because if you leave money for a child or a, for children that don't know God, they will mess it up. If you don't leave them with the right education and mindset to manage the money, it will be gone. So a good man leaves God with his children. His children's children, they know about God. They are saved. They are born again. They are serving God with their hearts. That's the first thing a good man or woman leaves to his children or our children. May God help us in Jesus' name. The next thing a good man leaves is the education. How do you manage your finances? Do you budget for your finances? What are you investing in? A good man will give the right training for the child to handle that finance. And the last thing, a good man now leaves the money for it. May God help us in Jesus' name. I remember I, I said one time, one of my close friends when I was in high school, Chris Lafay, and I forget the guy. When that guy, when we were all in college, freshman, the guy had $100,000 plus in his account. And he told me his grandfather gave it to him. And he's also his brother. So all the grandchildren got money from their grandfather. So by the time we're done with college, by the time we're done with university, this boy already got a house. <laughs> God will help us in Jesus' name. Toby, I don't know if you're raising your hand. You have something to say. Please, your, your hand is up. I don't know if you're raising your hand. By the time we're done with university, he already bought the house. He got married <laughs> quickly because a good man leaves an inheritance for what? His children's children. May God help us in Jesus' name. See, you are not rich until you have something for your grandchildren. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any comments or contribution before we continue? Anybody have any comments or contribution, please? Anything you want to say or add to it before we continue, before we move on? Anybody? Thank you, Lord. Funeral is expensive. <laughs> Very true. Don't leave your children with debt. Leave them with wealth. And also get insurance too. <laughs> get insurance. Get life insurance. Go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share something I've not shared before with you. This is how God taught me finances. Let me teach you how God taught me finances. Let me be more personal. So when I was um, when I was done with college, I would I mean it took the grace of God for me to graduate. I don't know about you, but for me, it was through the grace of God. I was just done with studying and reading. You know, I didn't know if I should go for my master's. That's my bachelor's degree. I didn't know if I should go for my master's. I was just done. So I decided to go for NYC in Nigeria. When I was done with NYC, I came back to the US and I was looking for work. I got work with family business, my, my, my own family. I was working with my family and I was just trusting God for money. And boy, money was tough to get. Like I was interviewing for jobs. I did not have any job. And somehow, you know, just trusting God, praying and fasting. Father, break everything, break every yoke in Jesus' name. I've been applying for that. After I got a job. And God started teaching me about finances. The first thing he taught me, God taught me to sow seed. That's the first thing I, I learned. I've been doing it too, but God taught me to sow seed. And when I started sowing seed, I will speak to my seed. I will speak to my tithe. I say, this tithe, I'm speaking to you. Go and get me my things in Jesus' name. This seed, as I'm sowing this seed, I receive more in the name of Jesus. As I began to sow seed, I, I started seeing increase in my life. God will just bless me one way or the other. He will bless me. Then I said, investing. I started buying stocks. You see five dollar stocks somewhere. I used to use Robin Hood. I don't know for those that are financial gurus. I don't know how you do your thing. Though. I started buying stocks. I didn't live beyond my means. I did not try to please anybody. The car I was driving is a car that I bought. Oh, some God, I'm not paying any note on it. I I didn't care about driving a Mercedes Benz. I just wanted something that drives and works well and is good at AC. 
<laughs> I never live beyond my means. Never, 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 never. And I'm going to say to you, don't live, don't try to please anybody. Don't try to, mm -mm, I did not do that. That's not what I did. The thing I did was to invest. That's the third thing I did was to invest. The fourth thing that I did after investing, and I said, God, and I told God, I said, God, I know sometimes I have money and I don't have money. I don't know why anytime I have money, the money will just finish. I don't know happened to you before. Where you have money, and some days you want to splurge, you want to give people money, then some day there's no money in the account. And God now told me, okay, sow this seed and pray. And he told me the pen to sow too. That is you, Pastor Yeah Debo. He said, sow this seed to him and tell God and tell me that this and this and that and that. I sow that seed. I said, Father, from now on, I will never lack anything again in Jesus' name. From that time till now, until forever, I've never lacked anything. So the fourth thing I did was to ask God for a specific instruction. And he now told me, he said, start looking at real estate. Start looking at real estate. Start buying land. And God now showed me where the money was. What am I trying to say? When you want God to bless you, God will show you where your money is. I've said this before. When I was looking at, um, I've, told, I've shared this scripture, when Jesus told Peter to go and fish, and he said, from that fish, you get coin from the fish. He said, that coin should pay taxes for Jesus and Peter. And I've said, everybody has a fish. In that fish is the coin. Your fish can be IT. Your fish can be investment. Your fish can be nothing. But that fish will bring the money that you need. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So what am I trying to say in general? That those who receive grace for finances get instructions from God. When Solomon sold a thousand bond offerings, that is when God showed up and God said, what do you want? And he said, Father, I need wisdom. And God said, I will not only give you wisdom, I will give you, I will give you wealth that nobody has seen before. And Solomon was a very wealthy man. Those who are rich in the things of God receive instruction from God. Those who are rich in the things of God are givers. May God help us in Jesus' name. And those that are rich in the things of God are also harvesters. When you give, you must expect a return on your giving. God was telling me today that the only thing you do is that you're not asking for your harvest too much. When I was doing my youth service, I sat in Benue State. It's a place in Nigeria, in the Middle Belt. And those guys are farmers. So one time we went for evangelism to a remote village. They had a bunch of oranges on the tree that was rotting, that was falling down because nobody went and harvested that orange. Do you know these, the tools you used to plant and sow seed is different from the tools that you used to harvest? It's not the same. You don't use a hoe. <laughs> the tools you used to plant is different from the tools you use to harvest. So I started asking God from now on, Father, I receive harvest of my tithing. I receive harvest of my offerings. I receive harvest of my seed. I receive harvest of my prayers. I receive harvest of my thanksgiving. Everything I've given so far, Father, please send the harvest. Money come to me now in Jesus' name, 100 fold return. You know, there's 60, there's 30, there's 60, and there's 100 fold return. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to let you know that God wants to bless you. God wants to increase you. God wants to give you that grace to shine forth and may that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move on because of time. If you have any comment, please let me know. Let me know. When God wants to bless you financially, he opens the doors. When God wants to bless you financially, he opens the doors and he opens the heavens. Look at the book of 1 Corinthians 16, 9. He says, for a great and effective door has been opened, but there are many adversaries. A great and effective door has been opened, but there are many adversaries. Every door that has been opened against you, anybody contending with that door, may God scatter every adversary in Jesus' name. Those that are trying to attack you, attack the door and the heavens have opened over you. May God attack them in Jesus' name. Say amen. Amen. And look at Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. He said, Thus said the Lord, to his anointed to Shion, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him. I will loosen the loins of kings to open before him the two hid gates, and the gates will not be shut. I will go before Shion and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give unto Shion the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that he will know that I, the Lord, will call him by name. I am the God of Israel. Those who experience grace in finances experience open doors and open heavens. And you know Psalm 24. If you look at verse 7, let's put our eyes on it. Let me not quote you, Psalm 24. Let's open our eyes. Let's open our Bibles, please. Psalm 24, verse 7. Psalm 24. 
He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Those who experience overflow, those who experience grace, experience open doors. Let me tell you something, brethren, ladies and gentlemen. God wants to give you open doors and open heavens. God wants to bless you financially. But that comes by the grace of God. That comes by the grace of God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Any comments so far? Any contributions? Any comments, any contributions so far? Anybody else have anything to say before we move on? Yeah, I, I want to comment on um, the area of especially in receiving and harvest. I think this is where a lot of Christians get frustrated in terms of um, sowing. I feel like a lot of people, they sow and they sow and they sow. And it almost feels like sometimes it feels like, and that's why I think people get wary of giving. And sometimes they listen to teachers about not paying their tithes because they're like, what is the point of giving and sowing um, into ministries or giving to the poor? But I think this is an area that a lot of Christians need to work on is in receiving a harvest, me included, and like calling forth those harvests and calling forth and speaking to it. It's as it, you know, your mouth can be used to water that seed with thanksgiving and you're just thanking God for the abundant harvest and, and calling it in and asking your angels, your reaper angels to go forth and to get you that abundant harvest. I think it's very, very important. We're taught a lot of times to give and to sow because it's better to give than to receive, but we also need, and I think a lot of people forget that they have a heavily bank account. And that's something I do. Um, it's like when I'm low on funds, I said, Lord, I know I got at least a million dollars in that heavily bank account because it's a hundredfold. So they got to be at least a million dollars in my heavily bank account. So I receive it. Another thing I do is like I keep track of my givings. Yes. Um, if we have bank books and they give us, uh, you know, God is a very specific God and they give us a bank statement at the end of the month, you should be tracking your giving. I don't think you should just give to like put down and name that seed. And so whenever there's lack and you sow, you can see what you've given. So you know that God, there's no reason I should be expressing lack in this area because I have seed in the ground. And so you call it for it. So I just wanted to comment on that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That was very apt. Thank you. That was good. Hey, Mr. Toby, go ahead. No, no, that was actually really powerful. Also, I just wanted to um, add that um, I know sometimes as Christians, we get wary of talking about um, finances because we think it's like a fleshly or worldly thing. But if finances were not important, why would God have blessed Abraham the way he did? Um, you know, the Bible talks about, like that Abraham was very great, you know, yes. even so much so that Lot that was at, <laughs> that was linked with him was so great. And then also we have to think about um, even the children of Israel, um, when God told them that he was, he said he's sending them into a land flowing with milk and honey. So God is not a God that just wants his children to suffer, because I think that sometimes People have that idea that God wants us to suffer. But if we look at the first instance of God um, interacting with men, we will see that that's not who God is. I just always wonder, like, how do we have a father that says that silver and gold disease and then he wants us to be poor? It doesn't make any sense. You know, yes. that would be an irresponsible father and God is not irresponsible. And also, just like Timmy mentioned, tracking your giving doesn't make you less of a Christian. It's, you can go to this and show God that this is what you said in your word. And, you know, and, 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 and you know, God, you can, I tell God that I didn't save myself. You were the one who saved me. So you have to provide for me. It's not, you know, so, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to add. Thank you very much. You look at Genesis 26, you said then 12, Genesis 26, 12, then Isaac sold in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. So you're very right. It's not a canal thing to want God to bless you financially. It doesn't mean the best thing ever. Because when the blessing comes, it makes rich and has no sorrow. Very true. With your harvest, you've got to call it for it. You've got to speak it. You've got to take it. You've got to accept it, grab it. Anything that you have, because our earthly account is there. And the Bible says, whatever we bind on it is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on it is losing heaven. So you want your money to come to you, speak it, bring it forth, because your words carry life and carry power. 
and God himself will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for your contributions. Amen. So Grace for Finances is, as I said, is getting that there. Then the next thing I, I put here is the fact that, and I was going to say, <laughs> I just saw this, man. So and I put here that <laughs> Grace elevates you. So uh, I was looking about, about look, <laughs> I was looking at old pictures of myself. So this is like, the first one is like Texas, like some years back, man. Like, yo, uh, I don't know, man. I think I was in high school, yeah. I don't remember. Or maybe I was my first year in college. <laughs> it's a while back. You can see the website shit now. You can see now that it's you know, some years back. And this is like 2013. Uh, I, I, I think we, we traveled to Abuja, 2012. I don't know, sometime we were in Abuja, like when we came for see the shoe. Lord have mercy. They now see the jump 2018. See from 20 to 20. You can see a difference. So this was like a trip to Canada sometime. I don't know. Then, you know, just see. What am I trying to say that? Um, sorry, I just, I, it just came to me that I won't let you know that when you have graceful finances, like grace actually elevates you. Grace makes you likable. Grace takes you from that. Oh, this picture, trust me, I will not want to show it to you. I'm not, and I put in my, I wish you could see my cursor right now, the first two pictures. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, God. Uh, but what am I trying to say here? That grace can elevate you. Grace can change your life. Grace can make you the best version of yourself like we talked about last week. Grace can make you enter into a realm of rest that you have not seen before in your life. And I pray that God will do that for you and me in Jesus' name. So God is saying to you and me that the grace for finances is there and you've got to tap into it. And as you tap into it, the Lord himself will help you in Jesus' name. And I put you that grace removes labor. Now, I'm not saying that you don't work, but the Bible says, if you look at Psalm 127 verse 1, it says, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. Verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now, of course, Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Grace removes labor. Grace brings favor. Luke 2, 52, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man, in favor with God and man. When I got my, my, my second IT job, like, not second, like my real good IT job, when the night before, I was very nervous. For those that have done IT interviews before, they can ask you questions from anywhere. They can ask you technical questions. They can ask you um, situational questions. If, you, if something happened to this firewall, what will you do? So, I didn't know what to do. But the Holy Spirit told me something. I'll never forget. He said, go and look up questions to ask your interviewer. I'm like, whoa, okay. So I Googled questions to ask your interviewer. So by the time I got to the interview, I was nervous. I was, <laughs> so we did the phone interview. So I passed the phone interview. So this was the physical interview. So we sat down and the man asked me, which was very, he said, do you have any questions for me? He said, read the first question. So I read the first question. I already opened, I printed out the page and I asked him the first question. He answered. After he answered, I asked, I asked him the second question. I asked him the third question. I asked him the fourth question. I think I asked him five. I don't know how many questions I asked him. By the time I was done asking the questions, the interview was done. That was it. So the recruiter now told the interviewer that, well, you can have to give him the job. I just, that evening, I got the job. The man that was supposed to ask me technical questions did not say anything. I even thought the man was dumb. Seriously, until when I started working, and when the man started talking, I said, God, if this man asked me a question, I would have failed the interview. The man that was supposed to ask technical questions, that man, he didn't say, he was looking. I was like, ah, is this man, is he, is he smart? Until when we start working and he started talking, I said, oh boy, if this man opened his mouth, I would have failed the interview. I'm telling you that grace removes labor. Grace removes labor. There's a place to walk, but there's a place to walk and enter into your rest. We labor to enter into our rest. You know, when you are doing gree, 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 God will just sit back. When you enter and rest in God, God walks. Exodus 14, 14, he said, the Lord will fight for me and I will hold my peace. God is saying to you and me that there's a grace that helps you cease from labor. May that grace come upon you and me in Jesus' name. I'll give another example. 
I'm giving personal examples. You two can give your own, please. I want to hear from you too. There was a time I was just trusting God. I wanted to just grow in spiritually. I just felt like I needed maybe something. So I was just sitting there and I saw a flyer. A man of God I admire, his name is Kenny Copeland. He was coming to Alabama. Alabama is very close to Georgia for those that know. Alabama and Georgia are these, they are neighbors. So he told me, he said, why don't you buy, book a place and go to the meeting? I said, go to the meeting. I looked at the drive, it was like three hours. I'm like, man, I don't want to drive no three hours, man. But you know, when you ask, when the Holy Spirit is close to you, the Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of grace. And you obey, you enter into your rest. So I booked a place, very cheap place, Airbnb. And I drove to Alabama for the meeting. By the time I got there, he preached. And I saw one man waiting for him to talk to him. I don't know why the man was waiting. So the man told one of the protocol guys, I won't talk to Kenneth Copeland. I said, okay. The guy said, okay, sure, just wait here. So by the time I was walking, just told me, why don't you go and wait with this guy? I said, for real? He said, go and wait with him now. So I now told the protocol that I meet someone to, <laughs> to Kenneth Copeland. So the man, the boy that was ahead of me went and took picture with Kenneth Copeland and left. So me, I just went and I knelt down. And Kenneth Copeland looked at me and said something. I won't tell you what he said. And lay hands on me and prayed for me. I was so happy that day. I was almost crying. By the time I knelt down and left, the boy came back. <laughs> the boy that wanted to take picture, he came back. <laughs> also knelt down. And can come and pray for him too. What am I trying to say? Grace removes. When that thing can come sent to me, I'm experiencing it now. Now. Because God used the, his prophets to speak you into your next level too. To push you into your next level. Grace removes labor. Toby, please go ahead, Mr. Toby. Oh, I'm sorry. I still just had my hands up. I apologize. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were going to say Grace <laughs> removes labor. Grace removes. Look at Psalm 102, verse 13. He said, You shall arise and have mercy upon Victor, upon all PPC members. The time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. God is saying to you and me that when you enter into the realm of grace, your labor and your striving cease. If you are always laboring, you are getting little. You need the blessing. You need grace. If you are going to work at 5 a.m., coming back at 10 p.m., you are tired, your back is paining, your leg is paining you for seven days in a week, you need the grace of God to remove labor and give you favor. May the favor of God rest on you and me in Jesus' name. There are many people that did not buy their house. God gave them houses by themselves. The Bible says you stay in a place that you, you, you did not build. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they left and they spoiled the Egyptians because the favor of God was on them. You need the grace of God to enter into a realm where God will bless you so mightily that people will beg to bless you. You know, I've said before in my church that there are people that they don't ask for money, but people give them money. There are people that come to a realm where they are, when they sing like Nathan Lepassi now, if he comes to your church and sing, you have to bless him because of the grace of God on his life. So there's the grace that God puts on you that you are number one. If you are a singer, you're the number one singer in the world. If you are a teacher, you're the number one teacher in the world. If you are a pharmacist, you're the number one pharmacist in the world. God puts a grace on you that is an insult for people to bless you below your standard. You get the point. There's a grace that removes labor and toiling. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich or he brings to us without painful toiling. You know, there was a time in my life where I would interview and interview for a job. They would say, oh, you almost had the job. Or oh, I'll go for, there's one job I had as a driver. I would go around Atlanta, picking people, they would cuss me out, and I got tired of it. But when I started applying for grace, God removed toiling from my life. May God remove toiling from our lives in Jesus' name. If you have been asking people out and they have been turning you down, you need grace. <laughs> If you have been dating the wrong people, falling into the wrong hands, you need what? You need grace. The Bible says either find a wife or find a good thing. Now what? Obtains favor from God. You need grace. If you are single, you need grace. If you are married, you need grace. We need grace. Say, Father, I take grace in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer. I take grace in Jesus' name. Grace removes. Look at when. I will give an example. When Pharaoh told, is it poor and the other people to, to kill the babies, the, the boys? But by the time they got there, the Hebrew women already giving birth. As Pharaoh was trying to kill the male children, they were giving birth to more people because of grace. 
grace removes labor. I can you see that a Jew that was supposed to be killed was a prince in the same Egypt under the head of Pharaoh. May God remove labor from your life and my life in Jesus' name. May God remove every form of toiling in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's finish this. Let's wrap it up. And I want to now put you on. What does grace bring? Grace brings favor. Grace brings favor. We have talked about favor. If we just go and look at our sermon on favor, favor is a very powerful subject. What does grace bring? It brings dreamlike miracles. Psalm 126, from verse 1 to 2. Psalm 126, let's open our eyes. Let's put it that Psalm 126, 1 to 2. Psalms 126, 1 to 2. Everybody there? It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Grace brings dream like miracles. You think you are dreaming like, whoa, what's happening? Grace brings ideas, concepts, and insights. You know, I'm looking at Elon Musk. The guy has always been the, I, I mean, I've tried to study him a bit. <laughs> He's very eccentric. But you can see that that guy has had some ideas that have brought him money. PayPal. When you have the grace of God upon your life, God gives you ideas. God gives you concepts. God gives you insights. May God give us ideas, concepts, and insights in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of God brings wisdom. Luke 2 52. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man. What does grace bring? Grace brings excellence. Psalm 8, verse 1. Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name? How excellent is your name in all the earth? Let me tell you something about grace. Grace makes you excellent. If you want to be rich and wealthy, you have to be excellent. I want to ask you a question. Do you bring out excellence in what you give as your product, as your good and service? When you turn in an assignment, is it an excellent assignment? When, if you're a photographer, do you take excellent pictures? <laughs> Are you updating yourself? Excellence is needed for you to be the best. For you to have the grace of God upon your life, you need to be excellent. And excellence is part of the God-given gifts of Holy Spirit ideas on you, the Holy Spirit blessing on you, is excellence. Thank you, Daniel. Was an excellent man. The spirit of excellence was on Daniel. And Daniel reigned under four kings, if I'm right. Reading up on your place and your field of assignment. Reading up on the best people in your field, the top people in your field, studying them. Because when you are excellent, you attract money. Do you know there are people that cannot be fired from their job? If there's triple recession because they are very needed in their business you should be part of those people may god help us in jesus name when you become a man or a woman of grace you become a man or woman of excellence there are some things that you not give as an output that you not turn in and say this is my result because you want the best you want to give the best you want to show that you are the best based on your output Excellence makes you work hard, makes you look for a way to improve and get better. You know, this is come that say there is the pursuit of excellence. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in Jesus' name. When God wants to make you wealthy, He gives you the spirit of excellence. I went to a country in the Middle East. I'll just give, and and I went to the mall. Man, if you look at, please give me all those top um, designers. Um, Louis Vuitton, uh, what else again? Gucci. I mean, you know, you know their names. Do you know their stores are driven from Old Navy? It's driven from Faded Glory. It's driven from who else again? Just give me different names. Because of the level of excellence in their material, you can go to a Louis Vuitton store and buy a wallet for five thousand dollars. <laughs> you can get a shirt for ten. I mean, a belt alone can be a thousand dollars because they are telling you that. Our own level is excellence level. <laughs> you're a tailor and you cut like a barber. You need the spirit of excellence. Grace brings excellence in the things you do. You know, when my boss asked me to, you, you, you see, when you show a level of effort and excellence in the things that you do, people take note of it. 
There is nobody that can resist excellence. A, an excellent church will bring unbelievers, we attract unbelievers because people see excellence. Ah, the choir is good. Wow. The, the Austrian department. Oh, man. The excellence speaks volumes. I also want to let you know that when God puts his grace on you, he puts the spirit of excellence. Anybody have any comments before we round off? We're almost done now. I put there, the key that opens financial prosperity is giving. There are several keys. Prayer is, an, is the master key that opens many doors. But the key to financial breakthrough is giving. If you are stingy, trust me, <laughs> you may not enjoy a level of prosperity that you need because the Bible says, the liberal soul shall be made fat. Luke 6, 30, it says, give shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run over. Shall men give unto your bosom? See, when God wants to bless you with $1 million, he will start testing with $100 first. He will test you with $5. If you can't give $5, I'm just giving or five naira, or five CDs, or five rands. Trust me, it will be hard for you to part with 100 rands, or 100 dollars, or 100 pounds. The key to financial prosperity, prayer does make the way smooth, but the key to financial overflow is giving. If you are tight-fisted, how do you get? Anybody have any comments before we round off? Looks like they say give. And I put a gift tithes, give offerings, sow seed, sowing on good ground and harvest. Why the earth remains? Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I put here in Genesis 26, 12, and I said, and Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continue to continue prospering until he became very prosperous anybody have any comments before we round off anybody have any comments before we round off oh sister Lua, was on me go ahead please praise the lord hallelujah um i was just going to um talk about something i learned um years ago and that is the fact that our our um tithe is different from offering Mm -hmm. Our tithe is very different from offering. God did not promise to God did not promise to multiply our tithe. He said it's going to um your tithe is there to uh, protect protect your seed, your offering mm. from devourer, right? Yeah. Um your offering should be the thing that you're really praying for for the multiplication. Because I realized that at some point in my life, you know, I was giving, I think, 15 percent, and I probably give one very crooked offering, thinking that, you know, God is going to multiply my offering. And I was able to come to a place to realize that God doesn't multiply, um, God doesn't multiply the, um, the tithe, but rather He multiplies our offering. And also in the spirit of excellence, um, I believe that um, the Bible says that the gifts of man will make for him, and another in, a, in the same proverb says, "Fierce man who has fierce thou a man who is and distracted. Fierce thou a man who is diligent, who is diligent. So that means you have to see the man first. It's not that you are talented and you are hiding in a cave. You have to see the man. So the grace of God upon your life for your finances. Make sure that they are seeing you. Don't just hide in a place and just keep your grace over your head. There will just be oil pouring pouring down from your head and like it won't really do anything for you. Make sure that you're putting yourself out there. You have a talent, you have a skill, you know that you are good, you know your photography skill and everything. Make sure you're putting yourself out there so that people can see you being diligent in your work and you will stand before kings and not mere men. And also in whatever craft you're doing, please and please make sure that you have standards. All money is not money. Like, all money is not your money. Maybe because I'm a business person, I think I've realized that. Some clients come to me and it's not like I'm being discriminated. I just know that this is not my client. And most of the times when I take them on, that that that, that reaches will have sorrow because that client will just, will just annoy me and, you know, the spirit of slap wants to come upon me sometimes and all that. So I just realized that you need to know that, like, Every money is not your money. Some are just like, some are just there to tempt you and to spoil your day and whatever. So allow it to pass in peace. 
know how to discern. If you're into business, some jobs are not your job. Some jobs are not your job. I know someone that I told, um, she had told me about that. She had two different jobs. One was paying um, lower and one was paying higher. And she wanted to go for the higher award. And because I'd heard um, a testimony at some point, so I told her, I said, I've heard this testimony before and this is looking like that. So maybe I'll just advise you. I perceive that she go for the lesser pay. And, you know, she went for the bigger pay. And I think six months down the um, lane, the company folded up and she was left with no job. And if she had remained in that company, the one that was paying less, that they would have increased her pay. She would have had more time for herself and enjoy the riches of God. He had no sorrow. You don't have to work 15 hours, 16 hours to live, you know, to live above every other person and stuff like that. So let us be able to discern those things. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Damayawa, thank you. Glory to God. What a, yeah. what a, what a teaching, what a word tonight. Glory to God. Um, me personally, as you were speaking, you, you mentioned it, but I, um, as you mentioned it, I, I just wanted to just harp on it again. Me, God is helping me with my finances. I'm not sitting down here. I'm not no Dave Ramsey. I'm, I'm on my way and I'm getting there. So I, I just want to speak to everybody, you know, no condemnation. Um, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, but we can always learn and grow from, from these words and what we're learning here. One of the things that kept coming to me as Pastor Victor kept talking was um, mindset. I know for me, one of the things that hindered me in um, get with finances was my mindset. There was a way that I just felt like God could never come through for me when it came to money. I don't know why it's so strange. I actually had to pray and fast. And I mean, it was something that I had to take communion over. It was very serious. Um, I think it came from a lot of my upbringing where I felt like I had to fend for myself um, against people and all of that. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I truly love God. I felt like he was a good God. I felt like in my academics, I had tried him. I had seen him come through for me with grades and with different things. But I just feel like money, like money is just so like, it's like, it's tangible. It's paper. I'm like, how can God help me in this area? So there's a way that I feel like if I ever, like any dime or any dollar that came to my account, I worked for it. I got it. Like I, I, I put in the effort. So I got this and that. So I just felt like I felt led to just, you know, encourage all of us to pray about our mindsets. There's a receiving mindset. Um, and there's a mindset that sees God as the source. Um, not our job as the source, not our side hustle as the source, but God as the source. And this is something that, like I said, I'm still in progress. I'm still reading books. I'm still like, I listen, even um, last week, the, the five days I worked out last week, I was listening to God is your source. Um, uh, Gloria Copeland and George Pearson's renewing my mind to that understanding that it is my mindset that shifts first. Because I've heard Andrew Womack talk about God like bringing like $7 million into his hand. Mm. I, well, we have not yet reached the place where God can, I can't, I, I'm getting there. Like God is like, I want to get you money. And he's like, okay, what do I do? And the Lord was like, it is your mindset. And the Lord gave me a scripture about how the children of Israel limited the only one of Israel. He's like, God that says nothing can limit him. It was the limited God. The Bible says the limited God, the God that quote unquote is unlimitless. And the Lord was like, just make a shift in your mindset. Yes. Understand that this is who I am. This is what I want to do for you. I had to, and that was me, honestly. I had to remind myself, God wants to bless me. God wants me prosperous. Every money that comes to my account, I don't have to walk, sweat and die for it. Like God can find different channels to bring this money to me. I just, y'all, in the middle of this grace for finances, somebody gave me $100, like cash. Legit, I don't know, I'm telling you, in the middle of this, somebody literally walked up to me and gave me fresh bill, fresh notes, $100, you know? So I'm the biggest thing that has helped me in receiving finances from God was my mindset. I was like, God, whatever you need to do to break this demonic worldly mindset, please do it for me. So I just want to encourage you guys to go back to God and say, God, this, this is where I am. This is my debt. This is my situation. You know what you can do to get me to where I need to do. I need to be Lord, please break, like help me 
change my mindset so that I can receive from you everything you have for me. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Victor. This is such a timely word. Thank you. Thank Jesus. Thank God. Thank you. That was a good one. Thank you very much. You know, but I've heard that you 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 work on assignments and you give to live. So you don't get rich on what you receive. You get rich on what you give. And at the same time, Ma says something, your mind. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So your mind determines the harvest that you get. Before you become, my sister Maya just mentioned that, that she was just in this thing. And that's a testimony. So he just came and dropped a $100. Trust me. It, that hundred dollars. Some people take them ten hours to get hundred dollars. Just a hundred dollar paycheck. So you have gotten that, and that's a blessing. So I want to let you know that you yourself can enter into that realm of financial overflow. But it starts with the mind. The mind is very powerful. We are not going to talk about the mind today, but I want to let you know that you see it in your mind before you guess in your hand. You see it in your mind before you guess in your hand. You see it in your mind. If you are want to be a multi-millionaire, you're a multi-millionaire in your mind. You actually you behave like it before it gets in your hand. May God help us in Jesus' name. I wish I could talk about mindset now, but no time. Finances is based on, and you renew your mind by the word of God. That word is the light of my, is the light of my spirit and the light of my path. That, you get the point. Your mind determines your, 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 your thinking. I've been to, I've talked to some people before and their mindset is, oh my gosh, like, yo, like this person's mind is in a different planet. Your mind determines your harvest. Your mind determines your life. I heard this lady, uh, I forgot her name. Um, and is it Foy? What's her name? Terry Foy? Terry Savelle Foy? She talks about that a lot, like writing a goal down, praying on the goal, and the goal comes to pass. Because of your mind, you are putting your mind and saying, this is what I want God to do. But I said, write the vision and make it plain. There was one time in my life, I want to let you know, guys, sorry, we're going to round up now. I wrote a check and I put some money on it. And I said, this is the amount I, I there's, one, there's one time I saw it in my account. I said, whoa, I remember I wrote it like some years ago. That I, this is the amount I want in my account. You put it in your mind. Your mind gets it. Your mind goes out there. Your mind is praying. As you are praying to your mind, your mind is also praying. God will help us in Jesus' name. So I might have to say something before we round up. I thought you were raising your hand. Sorry. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We give you the glory and the praise. We adore you. We thank you. We bless you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done and continue to do. Father, thank you for grace for finances. You say you are able to make all grace abound towards us, having sufficient in all things. Thank you, God, that you have your grace abounds towards us, your grace for finances. You say you supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Father, we decree and declare effortless money. We decree and declare breakthroughs on all sides. And we decree and declare, declare increase. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. It's not my word. You can take over. Thank you. Glory to God.